fatalities are likely to happen in panic situations when people try to evacuate buildings. In this video, I will share my experience in using kangaroo physics engine in Grasshopper to simulate crowd behavior. This simulation is accurate enough to receive support from recent literature in this area. We can connect the location of an agent to a destination point and use this connection as a spring. We also can turn the destination point into an anchor point and assign zero as the rest length of the spring. If we deactivate the spring in a given distance, there would be no force to push the agent to reach the destination point except the inertia force. The stiffness of the spring which connects the agents to the destination point determines each agent's velocity. I have defined a comfort territory for each individual where the presence of other agents becomes disturbing. Beyond this territory the existence of other agents hardly makes any difference. When a crowd disperses, agents constantly move while they try to retain this territory. However, to reach the equilibrium, the agents also try to minimize their displacement. This means that an agent will not move unless someone else intrudes his comfort zone. If two agents become closer within each other's comfort zone, their reactions are likely to be faster. In this case, a spring connecting them together can simulate the actions that each agent takes in relation to the other. I have set up an upper cutoff for that spring, so that when each one is located out of the other's personal territory, that spring will be deactivated. The springs will activate only in this circular buffer around agents. The connections of springs that connect agents will simulate all the interactions that take to reach equilibrium. Here we can see how this crowd relaxes. As you can see, springs are also capable of creating barriers. To do so, I have divided the barrier curve into equal distances and place points at the end of each subdivided curve. Except the points around the openings, we can assume each of these points as other agents that form the crowd. However, these barrier agents differ from crowd agents. One difference is that they do not move, therefore, they should be considered as anchor points. The other difference of these points with the agents is that their stiffness of the boundary point springs should be set high enough so that moving agents from the crowd never cross over that point. Agents are still likely to escape from the distance between the anchor points of a barrier, therefore, the distance between these anchor points must be smaller than the diameter of the buffer of agents, which is set as personal territory. Though, this distance is not adequate for a simulation. When an agent hits the boundary, the buffers around these anchor points determine his reflection. The sum of the buffers of the points on a barrier can show the reflection pattern of the agents. The reflection might be more unreal by increasing the distance between the points. On the other hand, placing the points closer to each other makes the buffer shape more smooth, and accordingly the reflections more realistic. Finding a safe route to approach the destination is not by trial and error. As we can see in this demonstration, an agent is wise and avoids taking routes which will collide with barriers. The model that we so far we have developed, however, doesn't provide this insight. A sighted agent maneuvers over the barriers in a smooth curve. We can add another feature to our model which pushes the agents away from the barriers before any collisions occur. This new feature is another boundary buffer which starts right after the first boundary buffer and covers a larger area. This buffer is not strong enough to stop the agent from approaching the destination. However, it reduces the chance of hitting the walls. With this feature added, the route that an agent takes will turn into an ERP curve in which the anchor points will serve as control points with different weights. A simulation was run in a layout with 70 agents. Two independent parameters were taken into account. One independent parameter is the velocity of agents, controlled by the stiffness of destination spring which changed from 5 to 25, with an intercept of 2. The other independent parameter is the existence of columns inside the corridor which leads the crowd to the exit doorway. 
as suggested by the literature. The columns were placed in an asymmetrical manner. The dependent parameter is the total number of potentially dangerous collisions that happen until the evacuation process completes. The potentially dangerous collisions were divided into two categories, likely in danger and in serious danger. The analysis of data supports some results from previous research. Increasing the speed will increase fatalities. In the literature this is usually addressed by faster is slower effect. This is true in both cases where columns exist and do not exist. There is another result which is also supported by the literature. The existence of columns will increase the total chances of collisions. Nevertheless, where columns exist, chance for serious injury will decrease along with the crowd speed compared to the case where columns are absent. This is probably because columns control the speed and the chance of crowd congestion at the doorway will be reduced. Also, in the case of congestion, columns will dispute some of the forces and prevent the forces imposed by each agent from accumulating to a dangerous level. While the literature also confirms this result, the power of this model is not very high. Increasing the sample size will provide more insight to the validity of this result. At the end, I would like to draw your attention to two parallel simulations run both with the existence and absence of the columns. The color of safe agents is green. If agents are likely to be in danger their color will change to ring. And if serious collisions happen, agents will turn into red.